Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another video. Now, this one's going to be about a new update to QMK firmware. Uh, so if you have been following some of my QMK uh, videos in the past, um, <laughs> your keyboard probably won't work with the new firmware. At least it won't compile. Um, so yeah, I'm going to kind of show you what I did to make it work again. Uh, so basically, there was kind of two main issues with the new update to QMK that are causing it to fail on the current layout that I'm using. Uh, the first one is the uh, mouse report uh, pointer thingy. Uh, I'll actually just show you here. Um, All right, so I'm just gonna uh, compile this firmware to see. Um, yeah, so right now it's version 0 0.17. I don't remember what version it was before when it worked like fully, but 0 0.17 is the next, is the uh, latest one as of making this video. Um, get rid of that straight. Um, so yeah, here is my uh, rules file. Uh, so here on the right is my changes and here on the left is what I had before. So as you can see, like <laughs> last time updated was like seven months ago or something. Um, so yeah, that was great. And then yesterday I just updated all this and um, was just testing it for a whole day basically just to see if it was okay because I had some issues with it running out of RAM. So yeah, this pointing device thing, uh, we were using that instead of the mouse because before this was like a lot smaller in size. So after you built it with this, your former size was a good bit smaller. But um, with the new QMK changes, you actually need to write a proper uh, pointing device driver and I did not want to do that. <laughs> so I went back to uh, mouse keys. Because like, if I write an additional driver for this thing, it'll probably be the same size as this, as like this plus the driver. Uh, so yeah, I just went back to that. Um, it's a little bit easier to manage with this anyway. Um, I had a lot of problems with this because uh, it was taking up a good bit of RAM. <laughs> so the new QMK firmware uh, uses more RAM on the keyboard than uh, what it used to be for. So I had to do some optimizations. Uh, I had to disable this as well because this was kind of pushing it over the limit a small bit. Uh, but I don't really use NK rollover. Um, NK rollover is basically uh, you can press all the keyboard, all of the keys at the same time. Whereas if you don't have this enabled, you can only press six at the same time. Um, now six at the same time is more than I would ever use. I would probably use at most four at the same time, you know? So uh, six is fine. Um, because like keyboards that are used QMK, they don't have like weird limitations like some other keyboards that you get from the market where you where they have like say six uh, NK rollover, but it only works if you use like space, uh, control, and some other keys. Whereas with this, uh, with the proper QMK keyboards, uh, you can press like the numbers one to six, and it'll and it'll show all of them up, you know, as active. So this is only needed, I suppose, if you're doing steno or something like that. But <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that. Um, so yeah, I just added like a comment here because uh, later on, if the keyboard gets even bigger, uh, I might have to disable this completely, which is kind of annoying because I like the dynamic macros. All right, so next thing I did inside the uh, config is, uh, so yeah, I 
comment all these mouse things out because I'm not using the mouse uh, per pointer. I'm just using the mouse wheel and some buttons. Um, so here I just defined the mouse scroll to be uh, constant. So if I press W and E on my keyboard, it will scroll up. And if I press E and R at the same time, it will scroll down. So that is uh, handy. I don't have to use the mouse to scroll and stuff like that. Uh, before I had like NK rollover always enabled, so I just comment that out. Uh, I decreased the number of combos uh, by a little bit to save on some RAM and also because I wasn't really using them too much. And then here is the, the, the dynamic macros. Um, I added this. Uh, this just saves up on RAM again because um, before if you like recorded macro 1 and you recorded macro 2 you could actually press that you can actually play macro 1 from macro 2 so you can have them nested you know um, but yeah I disabled that to save up some space and then the dynamic macro size this is how many keys or numbers basically by default is 128 which was too much um, <laughs> it was causing the keyboard to freak out basically when uh, the keyboard runs out of RAM um, like the functions they start overwriting into each other's addresses so it was like outputting random texts uh, clicking the buttons did nothing and so on uh, so just messing up everything um, I had to like hard reset it by pressing you know the pin on the keyboard to reset it so uh, yeah that's kind of annoying <laughs> but yeah I found that 64 is kind of at the very edge uh, this allows you to type around it saves like around um, like around 31 uh, keys so you can record around 31 keys in a one macro uh, they do share uh, the space so if you try to record macro 2 I don't think it will record anything or I'll just overwrite the first one so um, yeah not great but <laughs> it is grand uh, yeah so 128 I suppose that will allow you to record like around 60 ish keys or something so that's pretty good uh, I just cut it in half uh, later on I'll probably bring it down to 32 <laughs> And then all this down below is just how it was before, uh, just disabling every single LED effect because um, they take up a lot of space in the former itself. Uh, probably in the RAM as well, who knows. Um, yeah, so next thing I will go down to a uh, key map. So what I did here is um, I just replaced some macros. Jesus uh, Christ, go away. Uh, oh yeah, I was actually just uh, playing around with this. Um, I disabled the dynamic macros when I was debugging. Um, so yeah, that's actually not, not a change. Uh, yeah, so here is the first change. As you can see here, this used to be a macro. Um, I just change it to mouse button 5, which goes back in the browser or goes forward in the browser. This one goes back. Uh, this is exactly what I had before, just uh, with macro um, using the report pointer thingy. So just using this instead of the mouse keys. Um, so I had to have it in macro before. And oh yeah, here I actually changed uh, how the timeout works. Um, so before it used to be based on uh, like an RGB timer, but now it's actually counting in milliseconds properly. Now the problem is um, <laughs> five minutes is like um, it's like a, it's like two three hundred thousand uh, milliseconds. I'm pretty sure. And 10 minutes is like 600,000 milliseconds. Now, the problem with this is I'm using a um, two, two byte uh, integer, Un well, unsigned two byte integer 
to store these and that only goes up to 65,000 uh, so <laughs> this physically does not fit in into that um, storage now I could have added another variable to store like the second bit so when it goes above 65,000 it'll store like the second bit and so on but uh, I did not want to do that because like having your keyboard timeout after one minute or five minutes doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> I just kind of put this feature in uh, when I was just, you know, playing around with this keyboard and so on. So um, I just got rid of that, but you can still set it to like 30 seconds or one minute. And I'll get to uh, how I did the timers properly later on. And then here at the bottom, uh, we don't actually use this anymore. Um, I used it before when I was toggling between the game layer and the Mac layer, but um, I figured that I would don't really do that that much. So I might as well just get rid of all this and save up some space, you know. Um, as you can see here, it was already commented out from last time. So <laughs> let's see, when was this? Yeah, seven months ago. Um, yeah, so I don't really know what I did seven months ago, but yeah, you can actually see now returning. Yeah, all right, whatever. Um, so yeah, next thing we can go into is the macros. So let's see what I did here. Um, oh yeah, actually, before I do that, I'll go into my share defines. So this is where all the variables are. Um, so basically where all the variables are shared between all of these files, uh, I would just have them, you know, in one place. So nothing really changed at the top. Um, I just disabled some macros. So save up on some storage there. And then over here, uh, as you can see, I changed every single integer into uh, more appropriate data types. So integer is like, is four bytes and it goes from minus something to plus something. Uh, but we don't really use minus uh, numbers in here at all, in the former at all. Uh, so everything can be an unsigned int, which means it goes from zero to whatever. So in this case, 16 is uh, two bytes, eight is one byte uh, integers. So unsigned one byte is from zero up to 255 or 256 and 16 is like up to 200 and uh, or 65,000 ish and you int 32 so that'll be four bytes and that'll be like two million or something like that um so yeah actually i noticed that nothing really in qmk from her well not much uses uh four bytes for integers so um if you set everything to this, you can get away with it, but I recommend that you actually look at what the function returns. Um, so yeah, everything that's kind of like small, that so for example, this brightness amount only really goes up to, um, I think it was like, I don't know, 20 or something. <laughs> Same with this. Well, or maybe not, no, no, never mind. Um, that was something else. Yeah, so this actually goes up to like the full amount. 255 or whatever um so yeah i got rid of this uh less word length feature because i wasn't really using it anyway and so yeah that's that all right so let's go into macros so here again at the very top i just changed around you know some of the variables um yeah i commented out this uh, word length feature oh yeah i renamed the variable because um before I was using this timeout counter for multiple things, but now it's only used for the actual RGB of the keyboard. Um, yeah. So when you go down here, the macros are pretty much the same. Thankfully, I didn't have to change these. So yeah, here, as you can see, uh, 30 seconds is 30,000 milliseconds. And this is, you know, like I said, too much. So I just got rid of them. Uh, before, it was using some random, <laughs> Uh, I'll show you later on. It'll probably come up somewhere. Um, so yeah, I got rid of all these uh, things here. 
Oh yeah, so that was it really. Not much changes in the macros. Uh, the main changes are probably here in the leader. Um, yeah, so I changed some stuff here at the top. I got rid of the pointing device because we're not using it anymore. Um, yeah, and I got rid of some variables, you know, to save on RAM space. Uh, here, this is actually quite important. <laughs> I left this out and um, I had some issues with macros or with the leader key keeps on repeating the same thing. Uh, so make sure you set this to actually false uh, before I had it like this But I didn't need this variable anymore. So um, I just commented out the whole thing and didn't realize <laughs> So that was a good bit of a uh, time wasted trying to debug this Yeah, so I just commented out all these uh, don't need them for anything really um, Here uh, I'm using, yes, as you can see here, this before I was using this RGB timer. Um, from what I can figure out, this, is, this isn't this is like super accurate. It's mostly used for animations. So if you're making some RGB animations, you would use this, but it's not like really accurate. Um, whereas this timer read function, it is accurate to like, you know, the millisecond. So, okay, yeah, there we go. This this is actually the right one. Um, platforms, Chibios. Yeah, so as you can see, it returns a two byte integer unsigned, and it's reading this function here. Uh, so it's getting like the system time, uh, calculating some tick offsets and stuff like that. So yeah, it's accurate to the millisecond, uh, which is good. Uh, let me go back here. Yeah, so I'm using that now, and I assigned it to the proper type. Um, so yeah, I'll be using this variable uh, in some of the places here. So I just assigned it to a new to this function's output because. Um, I didn't want to, you know, calculate uh, that whole thing every time I needed it. Uh, so sacrifice some RAM here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I kind of redid all of this. Um, this RGB sync timer is no longer needed, so that's removed. Um, so yeah, here. Yeah, so if RGB timer counter, I uh, set it to this value because if it's zero uh, this was reset in the macros so if whenever you press a key it'll get reset to zero uh, so that means you know the LEDs shouldn't time out if you press the keyboard <laughs> and so if I have timeout enabled um, it will check how much time has elapsed between this and it will check if it's greater than uh, this. So 30 seconds will be 30,000. So if it is greater than 30,000, um, it will set the timeout to true and the keyboard will start sleeping. And there's a timeout counter here as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so next thing is I used the timeout counter before uh, to seed the bunny hop. But now I'm just going to use this because this is set here every time. So it should give us a good uh, random number generator. Um, so here the scroll up and scroll down is pretty much just replacing the report mouse, replacing it with just a simple, you know, register key code on register key code. And this is uh, looping and it has like the same timer. Uh, so after a hundred milliseconds, it will start scrolling, you know, so it will send a scroll up or scroll down. Um, so yeah, it just depends on if this is true or false, because um, if this is false, this will be true. That's the only way it can get in here. So that's some nice handy trick there. Um, so yeah, then this is all the same stuff. Um, 
So yeah, next thing is the combos. I don't think I changed much in here because it kind of worked. Um, I just got rid of the combo here. And oh yeah, I was trying to use the <laughs> register code here, but it was only sending a scroll event once um, when you held it down. So you need to like spam W any to actually scroll up. Whereas if you have it inside the leader, it will like every 100 milliseconds, if you have it pressed down, it will like, keep on scrolling up. So it's literally the same thing as here. Um, just handle differently somewhere else. Yeah, so this function is actually pretty much the same, just remove some stuff. Uh, this combos we did, reader. Okay, so the last function, or the last uh, thing here is the actual RGB controls. So this is mostly unchanged. Um, I just increased the size of this because I noticed this was a bit too small. <laughs> um, yeah, and then just, you know, change the integers to whatever they should be so since this doesn't really require isn't really required to be that high um uh, one byte integer should be okay and then obviously we set this to the default of 300 milliseconds for 30 seconds and then everything else here should be the same um yeah so i updated the types here because um, the layer itself is uh, uint8 and yeah I just put <laughs> int for everything before so uh, and just save some, you know space for the firmware for the RAM uh, and yeah so that was it really pretty much um, yeah so that was it mostly it was just removing the kind of feature that they changed with the pointer device and then decreasing your layout <laughs> to not hog up the RAM. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to make this update because if you have a complicated keyboard layout uh, like this, you probably will run into this issue. Maybe if not today, but some other day, because um, I'm pretty sure this firmware, the more, uh, <laughs> the higher the version, the higher the storage. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as you can see, I'm using 90% storage. Oh yeah, one kind of important thing in the rules is make sure you have LTO enabled. So as you can see here, uh, the firmware size is this. So I'll just copy that. Um, and if I disable this, and I just compile the keyboard again, As you can see, the former size has now increased by a good bit. So yeah, as you can see here, we have 3000 bytes left here. And now we only have 900 bytes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this, I'm um, actually show you what it is. Uh, I kind of forgot what they said it was. Uh, keyboard LTO enable uh, yeah so this will cause oh yeah it's enable your link link time optimizations so it'll cause the final step to take longer but I haven't really noticed any uh, differences. Uh, it will also disable some action functions and action macros, which are not used anymore anyway. So <laughs> I suppose you should keep this around for an old, a really old former. Um, but yeah, actually never heard of this before. Action macros. Let's see what this is. Oh yeah, wait. You probably didn't see that. Uh, let me make it here. Yeah, so 
yeah that's what it says here anyways i'm just searching for action macros i have no clue what this is Let's see action macros what is this <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure they um deleted the firmware for this or deleted the documentation for this because it's like they said depreciated so should be all good all right um so yeah that's that make sure this is enabled um i actually disabled it when i was doing some debugging there but uh that wasn't the issue so that's good um so yeah uh thanks for watching and bye bye